was born on my legs, that's what the problem was. <laughs> Did you ever know when there was something very wrong inside yourself and that you couldn't operate and you admired other people? Well, when I went to school in Westport in a small town in County Mayo, there was a ferocious teacher and he had different punishments for some of the guys that couldn't learn maths and science. And my punishment was that he'd make me take off my glasses, which was making me very vulnerable. He'd beat my face from side to side, and he'd make me walk up and down the whole length of the corridor of the school, braying like a donkey. Because he said, I want the whole school to know that the donkey came in here today to waste my time and his mother and father's money. And I'd be up and down the corridor, and all I would be thinking, I, there was a girl I liked. You know the way you'd have a crush on someone, even though you were only 12. And she broke it off with me as well. And my mother said to me, don't worry, Jane Jane. It's only puppy love. And I says, I know, ma'am, but it's real to the puppy. <laughs> <laughs> so I was up and down the corridor, my dad was alcoholic, and he told me every day of my life that I was no good, and that I'd never be any good. And I was operating on that information for most of my life. And my results at the school where I went to in Westport were very bad, so they thought if I got away from the boys, and the distraction, and my poor old mother didn't know that I was the boys. I was the bad company. You know every mother, she says, if we get him away from that crowd, but you're he's the leader of that crowd. So I went to boarding school, and I was expelled after a year and a half for studying too hard. <laughs> but what was written to my poor old mother and she had a candle lighting to St. Jude for my sister oh. <laughs> all the time I thought the fire brigade would be the next corner and I was expelled for drinking for smoking and fighting. And I won a Connacht College medal against them fellas over there. Stand up there, <laughs> Michael. The Galway crowd. Yeah. And they were the, the hot kings in St. Charles, but we hammered them. And I was expelled, and it's the only football of Gaelic football where there's only 14 fellas in the photograph. They wouldn't even bring me back for the photograph. <laughs> the president said to my mother, don't send that son of yours back here. It's bad enough that he doesn't want to learn himself, but he's stopping everybody else from learning. So in order to kill that pain, I drank every day for 20 years. And I went out selling ladies' shoes. And I was only 19, and the guy that owned the shoe shop also had a wholesale business, and he sent down for my mother. And he said, Mrs. Brown, your young fella is the best salesman, and I want him in here covering the whole of the country for our company. And when my mother told me, I thought she was fun, because I couldn't imagine that anyone would want anything to ever do with me, especially a man I worked for, because I even thought I was still no good, regardless of what I was doing. So he, he had a load of shops in Westport, and he sent me up to get a suit. And I got a suit, a grey suit with a pink shirt, and it had bell bottoms. You remember the bell bottoms? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a pair of four-inch platforms. <laughs> I could kickstart a jumbo jet with them. <laughs> but there was something missing, because there was always something missing. I had to get a grey tint in the new glasses. 
I had the old bony black ones. You know, they're back in fashion now. But at that stage, if you didn't have a tint, and I remember looking in the mirror with the whole regalia on. And do you know what they gave me to drive? A Volkswagen van, like, like the ones the hippies have. <laughs> you know the ones. <laughs> and I was looking at myself in this full length mirror in my mother's bedroom, and I was like something that was left behind after the dance band left town. <laughs> <laughs> Except that I couldn't sing. <laughs> but I, had, I was perfect. And I went out around Ireland and I drank every single day for 20 years. And then I got sober. I married a beautiful girl and I bought her a car. I was doing very well. And she looked out the window at the car and she was crying. And I thought she didn't like the colour. <laughs> and she says, James, I don't want a car. She says, I want you. Aww. And I didn't know what she was talking about. I thought she was on tablets and forgot them. <laughs> because I couldn't imagine anybody wanting me in preference to this. I really and truly couldn't. And I got sober, and there was still something missing, and I got involved in New Age. And I did everything to try to build up this boy that was lost somewhere, because I hadn't cried for 30 years. And I came to Medjugorje, and I found what I was looking for. And in 2005, I really knew for the first time in my life that there was something really missing. And I thought when I got to Medjugorje, I had got everything. I went back to Mass every day, every day. And I loved it. I started to say in my rosaries. I started, go I went to confessions. You know the story about confessions. <coughs> a friend of mine, a priest, and he had the first boys for the first confessions and the first went in and he said, bless me father for I have sinned. It's my first confession and I pulled my sister's hair and kicked the dog <laughs> and I threw pebbles in the river. And the next lad came in and he said, I said bad words and I didn't do the shopping for my mother and I threw pebbles in the river. <laughs> and the next lad came in and he had the same story. And the last lad came in and he said, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's my first confession. I pulled my sister's hair and I said bad words. And the priest said, is that all? He says, it is. And he said, did you throw pebbles in the river? <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, Father. I'm pebbles. <laughs>